Well, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us this evening. We've had an incredible, incredible turnout of people and pouring out of, you know, people wanting to get involved and to help Mosaic in our efforts to help as many people as we possibly can. So excited to have you all here this evening and our incredible Mosaic staff team. So we're going to jump right in. And I can get my computer. There we go. So I am honored to be speaking to you today and joining you from the traditional unceded territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam peoples here. And I am meeting you from our headquarters mosaic office in Vancouver. And it is an honor to be on these lands and um, helping support so many newcomers to come and learn and make this region home. So of course, a little housekeeping. As I mentioned, we are recording this evening. So it's up to you and Iris. You're muted, Iris. You're muted. <laughs> All right. oh. oh, I'm not sharing. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Okay. okay, hopefully you can see everything. Great, thank you. Perfect. So yes, we will be recording, we are recording this evening's presentation. Uh, so it will be made available to you, like I said, either later this week, but it may be um, early next week. So we will have it available and you will receive the link and be able to share that or rewatch um, after the presentation to um, if there's anything that you missed. We will have a question and answer period at the end of the presentation. And if you do have any questions that pop to your mind during the presentation, of course, please do. You can enter those into the chat and we will um, address those at the end because you never know, we may answer some of those as we go along. And yes, yeah, so if you do have any questions, chat function, and we'll head along in that direction. As mentioned before, it's up to you if you would like to keep your video on for the presentation, but it's not required um, because, it, like I said, we are recording. So I know some people don't feel comfortable having their presence recorded. So we make that, of course, um, up to you. So fantastic. All righty. So my name is Holly Jones and I am the volunteer resources coordinator for Mosaic. And I'm the one who's been sending you all the emails to many, many of you. So thank you for reading my emails and responding and, and joining us this evening. Many of you have expressed interest in becoming Mosaic volunteers either very recently or some of you, it's been a few years since you initially applied, and it is so wonderful to have uh, have you joining us this evening. We have Iris, who is our manager of refugee and sponsorship programs. The wizard and goddess that she is, she is the all-knowing being. <laughs> so she is a fount of information and an incredible resource, and we could not do what we do without her. We have Sharon Butler, our Director of Corporate Partnerships and Social Investment, and Sharon's going to be helping share the information of who are, what we can do, all of our fundraising efforts, 
and the tools and resources that we have um, in the, on the go right now. And our Senior Manager of Refugee Resettlement and Integration Programs is Alexandra Dolly. And we are, again, fortunate to have such an incredibly talented and skilled individual on our team helping lead the, lead the team and the forces to make as many you know, improvements in people's lives as we can around the world. So thank you, everybody. And I'm going to turn the floor over. <laughs> Here, are you able to unmute yourselves? No. Okay. <laughs> Give me two seconds here. Let me see. Perfect. It works now. Thank well, you. Holly. <laughs> Great. I know technology can be a struggle. So thank you. And I just wanted to take a moment as we begin to thank you all for being here because together we can make a difference and we can positively impact the lives of Afghan refugees. And before we really get into it, it's also important to make some space because I know that many people who are in this room or in this space tonight may have family, friends, relatives that are currently in Afghanistan or have fled Afghanistan and your heart is likely aching. So in that case, I want you to know that we're here with you. We see your pain and, and we're walking alongside you. So um, as we're talking, just realizing that these are people we're discussing and lives that um, we're working together to provide new opportunities to. So thank you, Holly. Next slide, please. I think if you do it on the right side, it'll go easier, yeah. If you use your arrow key on left, it will go back. Great, so for today's session, um, we have an exciting array of things to cover. First of all, will be an up, some updated information about Canada's response to the situation in Afghanistan. A brief introduction to Canada's private sponsorship of refugee program. Next, we'll talk about what Mosaic is doing and why we really need you. Before we talk about some fundraising essentials, volunteer opportunity updates, and then of course have a question and answer period at the end of the session, because we really want to hear what kind of questions are coming to your mind. Next slide, please, Holly. So as we begin, a quick look at what has happened and what is happening in Afghanistan. Well, the United Nations Refugee Agency now estimates that over 1 million people have been displaced due to the instability, insecurity, and violence. The Taliban has assumed total control. And this happened rapidly, this happened harshly, and this happened in a way that they're constantly saying, we're going to value and respect women's rights, but in actuality, they are not. The world is deeply concerned for the well being of women and girls, activists, journalists, minority groups who have been traditionally penalized by the Taliban, including the LGBT community and other ethnic and religious minorities, under their harsh rule. So, the United Nations Refugee Agency is still working in Afghanistan and they're providing support to all of the internally displaced people in 299 out of the 450 districts. So as you can imagine, to have over 1 million people that are displaced inside the country and outside of the country, this is a huge number of people and there's a lot of support that's required. And then sadly, as everyone knows, the um, Immigrant, Refugees and Citizenship Canada which is um, part of the federal government here in Canada, we stopped our evacuations out of Kabul in September. Next slide, please. So how is Canada responding? Clearly, this is a significant issue with a lot of people affected. Well, on August 13th, the Canadian government announced an expanded resettlement program to resettle 20,000 Afghan refugees. And there's more information about this pledge 
on our Mosaic website. So I encourage you to read that for a little bit more information of how that was going to be done. The good news is that in September, the government increased this commitment to 40,000 Afghan refugees to Canada. Well, we may be hearing that there are some Afghans who have been recently arriving here in Canada. And those people are typically government-assisted refugees. There's two different main ways that refugees will come to Canada through the resettlement programs. And one is through government-assisted, and the other is through private sponsorship. So the vast majority of these 40,000 spots for refugees in Canada will be brought here through private sponsorship. And this is one of the things that we definitely want to talk to you about today, because Mosaic is a leader in private sponsorship. And private sponsorship is only possible with the support of people like you. So 40,000 is a significant number, but we believe we can make a big difference. We're excited that the expanded resettlement effort is focusing on women, girls, LGBTQIA plus community members, and those who are belonging to the ethnic and religious minorities who I mentioned earlier are often targeted by the Taliban. So this is a very important response. And honestly, it makes me proud as a Canadian to see the way that our government and our community members are responding. And I hope it makes you proud too. Next slide, please, um, Holly. So within Canada, we're Mosaic, and what are we doing? First of all, I'd like to say that Mosaic is, I know that everyone in this room knows a little bit about Mosaic. So you probably already know that we're one of the largest settlement nonprofit organizations in Canada. We're also a sponsorship agreement holder, which means that we have a unique ability to privately sponsor refugees into Canada through Canada's private sponsorship of refugee program. Mosaic believes in walking alongside the community. So right now we have been walking alongside the Afghan and wider Canadian communities to provide meaningful refugee resettlement and integration support. In the past, Mosaic has been a leader in private sponsorship, including during the, the Syrian crisis, as well as through other innovative programs, as you may have heard of Operation Not Forgotten, which Iris does an incredible job leading, supporting people from, from Australia or who are being detained in offshore centers in Australia. Well, we're a leader for a reason, and that's because we deeply care and we have the ability to make a profound impact with your support. So the first step that we're taking is interest in sponsorship registrations. And you can find this at the Mosaic website, mosaicbc.org. This is a space where people can register interest in sponsoring family members who are from Afghanistan and currently in a secondary country or in a third country that's not a durable solution to come to Canada. So the first way we're supporting folks is through registration for private sponsorship. The second way that we are working, and it's highly related to the first, to support Afghan refugees is through our Afghan Refugee Response Fund. And we're going to be talking to you about this today because this critical fund will enhance our support efforts and it will enable the critical resettlement of as many refugees into Canada as possible. There's a link there. We're going to share both of these links in the chat. But we're very excited to talk to you about this today. And Mosaic is not just Mosaic employees. We are Mosaic with volunteers. We are Mosaic and we are Mosaic with the community. So we deeply care and we want to work alongside you to support members of the Afghan community. Next slide, please, Holly. And I'll pass the floor over to you, Iris. Thank you. Hello. Now I can unmute myself. Here I am. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank you for showing that, that you are committed. I mean, I'm looking at the number and I'm going to 100 participants. 
unbelievable that there are so many people who want to make a difference, who want to make an impact. Because I know that each of you can make a huge difference here and that together we can make a huge impact. We want to encourage you to do what you can. And we also want to encourage people to give what you can, your time, your talents, and your resources. Holly, let's go to the next slide. So Mosaic is committed to assisting as many Afghan refugees as possible to settle in Canada over the next three to four years. And as you're hearing me say the next three to four years, because it is really a long-term project. Because if we're privately sponsoring refugees together with their family members here, we need to support them when they get to Canada. And this, the reality is private sponsorship will take likely up to two years before somebody arrives. Okay? But we cannot apply to sponsor people unless we take action now because we need to start putting these applications and the resources together now and then really put in the long-term support. The incredible thing is that the leadership of Mosaic has already agreed to put the resources in place to support that long-term effort. And I'm here to tell you that we've done this for the Syrian effort. We can do this. We can do this as Canadians. We can show our commitment and make a difference. But it will take time and it'll take many, many, many hands. But it also takes money because we need to make sure that when we're sponsoring people that we have the funds in place to support them for the first year in Canada. And that is a big component of what we will be able to do. And so as a sponsorship agreement holder, Mosaic takes on the overall responsibility to make sure that the financial support that the family needs for their first year in Canada or an individual needs are met. That's our responsibility as a sponsorship agreement holder. You're gonna ask me next, how much money does it take? And Holly is gonna pull up the next slide and we're gonna show you. So this is how much it costs. And this is the financial support, including startup costs for a family. Some of you are going to go $27,000 for a family of three hours. What are they supposed to live on? Well, these rates are based on social assistance, and we certainly have access to many more resources of in-kind donations that we will be able to assist people. But these are the minimum requirements from the Canadian government. And I want to keep, have you all keep in mind that we will try to co-sponsor with families wherever is possible. But this is what it takes. And we will certainly be there with people along the way, like I said, three to four years to support them where we can. But these are the funds we need to raise. We need to start putting money where our compassion is. That is the most important. I'm gonna switch slides, sorry, Holly. So, as I said, sadly, it could take two or more years for sponsored individuals to arrive in Canada. That is a reality. And we wanna be really, really upfront and honest with all of you guys. Right now, it takes very long. So I see somebody's asking what are startup costs. Startup costs are things like um, getting new mattresses, uh, buying new clothes, um, and, and getting furniture. But you know, we're a mosaic and we're a community with all of you. So we're going to access furniture donations wherever possible. So we don't use that for startups. So we can actually use it to really support these families instead. So they have more money available to them. So a startup cost is the cost that it starts to uh, damage deposit for a rental home, those kind of things. Those are startup costs, okay? And really, we, all of you told us you wanted to help. And I'm impressed none of you have logged off yet. So thank you for that, okay? And I want to tell you that 
because it will take so long, many of you, we will not be able to give you something to do right now, something to do like picking up people from the airport or driving them to the doctor, but we have things for you to do, things that are so extremely important to us, things that will change lives because we actually really need to raise funds. And we are going to ask you tonight to help us along that journey because that's the building blocks to changing lives. And I know many of you are going to go right now, Iris, I've never, 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 never done this. How would I possibly do this? And I want to tell you, we're here to show you how to do this. I know we can do this. We need to raise a lot of money over the next year and a half. And we need help. We need to amplify our voices and our outreach that the world walked away from these women and children, these young girls. And we need to say we are there for them and we'll do what we can to support them. So we will be there along with you. We will show you some concrete ideas on how to do this. And we will walk beside you and hopefully we can, no, not hopefully. I know, I know we can do this together. Okay. So please put on your I want to help hats and help us make this happen. Oh, you want to change the slide again? We estimate that it will take two to three million dollars over the next two to three years. So what can you do? Maybe you can raise a thousand or even ten thousand dollars. Maybe you can think about how could I possibly do that? And I used to think the same way. And until six years ago, I've never raised money. And now I can raise money. We know how you can do this. Anybody on camera, do you know 10 people? Come on, you know 10 people, right? Each one of us knows 10 people. We know 10 people who might be interested in what we're doing and would help us support that. If we can find 10 people and ask each of those 10 people to talk to 10 people, okay? Each of those 10 people will talk to 10 people. We can easily raise $1,000. So if you've got, I think there's something wrong with the slide. So one is say, if you got 10 people, okay? And each of them talk to 10 people, we got a hundred people, right? 10 times 10 is a hundred, okay? If each of those hundred people give $10, we got how much money? Come on, I think the math is on the slide that's not working. So if you get 10 people and you ask 10 people to, to give $10, you got a hundred dollars. But if you ask 10 people, to talk to 10 people, and they each ask 10 people to give $10, you got $1,000. If each of those 10 people that you talk to, talk to 10 people and ask them to give $20, we got $2,000. That's how easy it is. Just ask 10 people to please ask 10 people for you to give 10, $20. People will easily give $20 and you will have raised $2,000. That's how I want you to think about it. I bet you, you know 10 people who would talk to 10 people for you if you ask them. They may know 10 people who would each give them $20. And if each of you, let's say, were able to do that and each of you raised $2,000, there are 100 people here today. We will have raised two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, that's how I want you to think about it. It's not hard. What's hard is to step out of our comfort zone and actually talk to those people about what we care about. But we have to do it if this is important. This is important. This is important. We need to do this. Okay, we need your help to do this. We need your help to talk to enough people. So we can make a difference.
So I want you to think about that. This is one way of doing it, but I'm gonna hand it over to Sharon. And Sharon is gonna to talk to us about um, how our, our um, how her department is able to help you how to fundraise on social media and how to create your own fundraiser on the web where all the funds that are raised go directly to Mosaic and people get a tax receipt pretty much instantly. So I'm gonna hand it over to Sharon. Thank you so much. Well, we still got a hundred. That's great. Thank you. Hello everyone, thank you so much Iris. As you can tell, Iris is very passionate and she breaks things down really simp simply for people to understand. Um, and she's actually already created a, a fundraiser for this just so she knew how to do it. Um, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna take you through this. All of this will be emailed to you at the end. So it is a lot of information. Um, I can put my, my email in there in the chat so if anyone has any questions after this, or Holly can include it in the, um, in the email. But online fundraising, what it is, is basically it's, it's online, obviously, and it uses the power of community to make a difference for people in need. So every fundraiser, online fundraiser, has an online fundraising page where people can donate to the cause. So we have created, Mosaic has created the Mosaic Afghan Response Fund right on Canada Helps. And we've put all the information there of what's, what's happening and people can go and donate. So there's that aspect. And then what we've done is we've taken this even further and we have created a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Oh, we'll just go to the next one, please. Thank you. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, probably a lot of you have never heard of this. It's, it's um, something that's relatively new in the last five to six years, but it's when individuals organize personal campaigns to collect donations from their friends, their families, their colleagues, their neighbors, classmates, church groups, club, group members, sports organizations, whatever you can think of. You can ask anyone. Um, so if you were to make a list, just as Iris was taking you through, we all know 10 people. Okay, well, what if we started listing those people that you feel comfortable asking to donate? You can make a list. Um, and why are these people gonna care? Because you care, because you're passionate about the cause, about helping the Afghan women, about helping Mosaic, and you wanna tell the story. So all the, all the money raised, 100% of it does go to the Mosaic Afghan Response Fund. Everybody who donates will get a tax receipt. And we're gonna keep you updated on um, the stories and what's happening and how you're helping and when people are arriving. Um, as we've explained, it's, it's gonna take years, but we will have updates along the way and everybody will be providing with that. So the money will all go to resettle and integrate the Afghan refugees. And you know that your money is safe and you will be receiving tax receipts. So what and how to ask. This is obviously the hardest part. When you, when you start fundraising, it can be very intimidating. Um, but when you start to think, oh yeah, well I know so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so and, -so, and you know, I did a favor for this person, you can quickly come up with names and people that you think are comfortable asking. Um, any amount, of course, will, be, will help and will be appreciated, but it's really all about gathering community and getting people to support and participate. And that's the most meaningful thing of all, because it's fun. It really, it really is when you, when you have a cause that you care so deeply about and you're able to use that energy and you know, your, your active social connections to create something really impactful for people in need. Um, we, we, so what we have done is we have created tools on Canada Helps. Um, we will we'll send this to everyone. We have a link that we'll send out and all the tools are right there. So we've put all the text as far as this is the information. This is what we're raising funds for. 
you can create your become a, a team captain you can participate in the one that we've already created um, it makes it super easy to, to share with email social media um, you can put your own videos your own photos on there it's, it's a great great tool So and when when you um when you know obviously it's when you ask for people for money you want to give them updates you want to let them know where their money's going. Um, so along the way you can even say hey you know we're halfway there. If I had a let's say I created my my page and I wanted to raise ten thousand dollars. Well when you're at maybe twenty five hundred dollars you could say we're at twenty five hundred we've still got seventy five hundred dollars more to raise and this is how we're going to do it. So you, you would say a gentle reminder to keep getting people to donate. Um, and as Iris mentioned, the tax receipt will automatically be sent. The minimum donation through Canada Helps is $3 and you'll receive a tax receipt. If an individual donates directly to Mosaic from our website, which is also an option, um, we do tax receipts for $20 or more. So by going through Canada Helps, everything basically gets a tax receipt. You can put in a personal phone call after your friend or colleague or relative has donated, you can call them up and thank them, or you can email them thanking them. And we actually get updates from people when they've made a, re a, a, um, a donation. And so we automatically will email those people back as well. But if you set it up, it's always better coming from the people that set it up. Update your supporters along the way, let them know when you're getting close to your fundraising goal. And um, if you have people that want to contribute cash or checks, um, we at Mosaic can process those for you. You can just let us know. Um, and you know, if, if they wanted to drop it off or you want to drop it off or mail it, we can, we can update that. And again, it's $20 or more if you go directly through Mosaic. And so I can, I can answer any questions or if um, anybody wants to reach out later, um, I can answer questions, but thank you so much. We, uh, it, is, it is set up quite easily and um, we will send out all the information so everybody has it. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Sharon. Oh, as it, you see, we've got well, from JFK, John F. Kennedy, one person can make a difference and everybody should try. And I, that when I came across that the other day, it felt very fitting for this, the current uh, situation and climate we find ourselves in, that we can make a difference and we can do it one person at a time. And like Ira said, by talking to one person at a time, going to one friend and going, you know, oh, this, I, oh, I know this person, I can talk to that person. So. And I know we're gonna hand this back over to Iris and she's got some more information here. So let's see, there we go. <laughs> hey everyone. So what I wanna make sure is that um, don't get discouraged that this is something brand new. I mean, you could do it any which way you want. You know, I know a lovely group of grandmas in Australia who have raised twice $20,000 by making cozies and mittens in the last two years. So each year they raise $20,000 by doing something they love to do and by talking to people about that they care about refugees and that they wanna help refugees. So that's one of the really big things we can do. We can talk to people. You can set a Google alert on, on different, um, topics um, about Afghan refugees, about refugees in general, start sharing that on your Facebook. But more than anything, start talking to the people you care and directly ask them to contribute because this is important to you. It is important to the world. It is important to us that we do not abandon those young girls with dreams who want to climb the highest mountains, those women who became judges and lawyers, those women who are advocating for rights for girls and women, we need to remember that until 1931, women weren't even persons in Canada. 
and how fragile these rights are and how they've been taken away. It is up to us, we need to make a difference. And I'm really hoping that you join us in this effort to make that impact and make that difference. The more people you can talk to, the better, but you don't have to do it all at once. Today you can talk to one person, tomorrow you talk to another person, the day after that you talk to another person. It will grow and I'm asking you to be persistent. From experience I know persistence works. You really need to make it clear that this is important to you and that you truly have seen the transformative power of bringing people to Canada and having newcomers come to Canada and enrich our communities. So thank you so, so much for being here. And if you have questions and you need more resources, just let us know. We are so excited to be joining with you in an effort like this. And we're really more than happy to create resources, to make them available to you and to answer your questions, which we're gonna do at the end when Holly is finished. So I'll hand you back over to Holly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Iris. So that ties into, and Iris has touched a bit on, on this before, what are volunteers going to do? What, are, what, are, what will we, we be doing? So the big thing right now, as we've said, is the, right now our fundraising efforts together is the key project that we'll all be working on. So, together with so many people that we have that are on the call here with us tonight and those that who were unable to join us live but who will be getting the uh the recording that together we're hope we're you know we can make these 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 numbers shrink <laughs> we can do it together so that's our our first step and then as we get closer to people arriving we will have more hands-on activities and supports that we need help with. Like Iris said, you know, it's helping set up housing for people as people are arriving. So helping move mattresses, moving beds at, you know, eight at 10 o'clock at night because they're, they're, they're flying in and helping make sure that, you know, there's, um, you know, the houses are set up, that there's, uh, clothing available to to people um, so we're not right now we're not in a position where we need those those physical donations but that time will come so we'll need volunteers to help with you know picking up of donations and transporting and these are things that volunteers I know that not everybody on the call tonight is also in Vancouver is in British Columbia. So we, there will be uh, refugee families uh, arriving to different places across Canada. So just because you're not in Vancouver doesn't mean that there won't be opportunities to get involved. And uh, like Alexandra and Iris said, Mosaic is very unique that we're able to help match volunteers with sponsorship families and different things like that so that we can help these projects and these people you know some of these families can't do they who are spon sponsoring their own family members as part of this program you know they can't do it alone they don't have all the resources you know if they did we you know we wouldn't be in a situation like this so together we can work with these families to make you know that a reality and you know we grow and learn so much the more we work and help the help others so you know by helping others we help in ourselves and grow ourselves as human beings and our empathy grows so um there we go. So yes, right now, the big thing is helping us raise the funds. So, and the faster we can start getting the money <laughs> in, you know, that helps us move those targets closer to having people arriving. 
because we have to have the money before they can arrive. So that's our big goal all together right now. You can participate in a private sponsorship team. So even if you're an individual, we have the capacity and the ability as Mosaic to help match individuals to sponsorship teams. And I know that some of you have reached out specifically asking for some of that information, you know, that you want to help and you want to be a part of a team, but you don't know how to do that or you don't know how to start a team. So our incredible staff have the knowledge to be able to help facilitate that activity and, and make that a reality as well. And then of course, what can we do later on as we're getting closer to arrival? We're gonna be helping prepare accommodation for people arrive, when people arrive. Welcome teams, when people are arriving into the airports across Canada, we can be there to welcome them to their new homes. When they arrive, they're no longer a refugee. They are a resident of Canada which is pretty incredible opportunity for people that when they when they arrive and they step off the plane they are they are officially residents of canada and are no longer classed as a refugee so that alone is i i learned a lot when i learned that because i i didn't know that i'm new to the world of private sponsorship like so many of you are so i'm learning alongside you and I am truly blessed to have these incredible, incredibly knowledgeable people to be leading the, to be leading the, the team and helping us learn <laughs> and helping me learn uh, along the way. Of course, we're going to need language supports. Many of these people, as they're arriving, may not have English as one of their languages of their many languages that they will have. So having people that speak a variety of languages, uh, Urdu, Dari, Farsi, uh, Turkish, and I know that the ladies will have many, many other languages and that potentially in the lists as well. I know with Operation Not Forgotten, we also have Rohingya and a, few, a number of other languages. So volunteers that have these languages help make these transitions and arrivals to Canada, just that more um, smooth and welcoming and comforting to, to these individuals and families who are, you know, going on such an incredible journey and voyage with, you know, they don't always know where they're going. You know, what does it, what is, Van where is Vancouver? What is, you know, what's, what am I gonna see when I get there? So having these people and having you there to help just you know it, it's like welcome the welcoming arms and and as the the musqueam squamish and squalitude people it's the arms the hands open we're welcoming these new arrivals to canada and we're going to need your help to do that <laughs> another thing is life skills supports and you're going what on earth is that so life skills support. So I think many of us who have grown up in Canada, or if you've been here for many years, we, we know how to use public transit in our, our local area. But if you're new and you have never used an, a compass card in Vancouver, you know, having somebody to help you learn how to do that is incredible to help you navigate those ins and outs of the communities that are, the people will be living in. So helping them understand and showing them the way to take transit to get to the halal markets or you know the, the shopping and the stores that carry the products and, and that that they're used to and that they're looking for so that they can have and that sense of normalcy of making their own food that for some people that can be one of the biggest things is being able to make 
food that you're used to. So having volunteers to be able to assist with things like that, going and helping somebody set up their first Canadian bank account. So helping them navigate at the bank because you know that can be a daunting process for any of us trying to get a new bank account set up or something like that. And if you don't have English as your first language, it can be you know, even more challenging. So helping people with some of these, you know, these skills and you know, help, and like they said, we walk alongside our clients and the refugees and the families and that that will be arriving with us. Um, you know, we're not gonna do everything for everybody. We'll be walking alongside and supporting them because we want everybody to be able to take their own, you know, their own flight with their wings. Once they feel that they're comfortable and ready to do so, we are here to support them and assist them to get to that stage. And of course, volunteers don't necessarily have the time. They have the heart. And it's one of the reasons why I am so honored and, and blessed to be uh, a, a volunteer coordinator, because I couldn't do what I do without all of you and your incredible work and your desire to help and make a difference in people's lives. So I, from the bottom of my heart, I do thank you for being here tonight and showing that you have the heart as well and the desire to help people. So that's what makes humanity such an incredible, incredible uh, thing to be a part of. So this brings us into our, our question and answer period here. So we'll ask people, um, you can put your questions. I know we have many questions in that in the chat uh, and we'll, we'll work our way through those. And if you have a question that you would like to ask, you can also uh, raise your hand. So if uh, that, you can find that in the, uh, the actions at the bottom of your screen. So there we go, <laughs> Navid has already found the raise your hand. Uh, and then let me see if I can, I'm not sure if I'll be able to have multiple people unmuted at once. We will try this. Alrighty. So Navid, I'll ask you to unmute. There we go. And please ask your, uh, ask your question. Oh, his beard. Alrighty. So. Okay. Here. Let's see. Okay, I can answer some questions while you're looking through the chat if you want to. Perfect. That would be great. Thank you, Eric. Okay. All right. So I know that many of you have family registered. So I want to answer the question about registration in Vancouver only. No, we are a national sponsorship agreement holder. We can settle people right across Canada. We have people from across Canada registering, but of course, the more people we have registered, the more spaces we're gonna need, okay? Uh, the Canadian government has still not announced exactly how many extra spots we will get, be getting for Afghans, but we have not waited. We will be taking all the um, spaces we are given for 2022, and 2023 to Afghans. In addition to that, we will use the extra spaces that the government will hopefully make available to Afghans to bolster that number in addition to that. And likely that will not be just for 2022 and 2023, it'll likely include 2024. So that's our commitment and we can sponsor people right across Canada. It does not have to be in Vancouver. So um, then I saw a question about family. So if you registered your family under the Mosaic uh, registration on our Afghan response page, we're going to have a separate meeting for everybody who's registered family, okay? 
and we're going to tell you how we are going to go through this list. We know that many, many people have registered. We also know that most of you are telling us that you have the funds to support your family. But we have to tell you that we actually need to make sure you are able to do that without facing hardship. That's our responsibility as a sponsorship agreement holder. We also know that many people are not able to afford to have those funds. And that's why we need that Afghan response fund. That's why we need to build that fund. So families here are not pushed into desperation trying to assist their family members. We will be realistic in all measures and we will do our best to do this as equitable and as compassionate as possible. And like we said, we're going to use everything we can. And if there are other people, sponsorship agreement holders who will have extra spaces, we will connect with them and we will try to assist as many people as possible. As, as Sharon pointed out, uh, the Afghan Refugee Fund will go uh, directly to support Afghan refugees. And uh, looking at, um, so you can set up your own fundraising page. You can be part of that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page. If you have like little questions, write them in the in and out to, to Holly, who is, I think email is gonna show up at the end. She's gonna con distribute them to the person that's best able to answer that question for you. So we can direct you in the right way, but also remember there'll be a recording of today, okay? We are not, so I wanna make one thing very clear. Sponsorship of refugees is not for sale. It is a compassionate humanitarian program. That means refugees are not able to contribute to their sponsorship funds in Canada, okay? Very clearly, and we will check on that because that's our obligation. It is a compassionate program. It's a humanitarian program. And it does not matter if the refugees we're helping are rich or poor, it will make no difference. Okay. We are absolutely sure that you have different skills that you can use for different things to assist us, absolutely. But what we're really trying to tell you is our most overarching need right now, right now, today, if you ask yourself, what can I do to make a difference? We're trying to tell you, you can make the biggest difference right now by assisting us in raising funds for the Afghan Response Fund. So we can help the most vulnerable. It's like when you think about it, there's a disaster somewhere and the Red Cross is out there helping. And you think maybe I should go and help those people. But really, you can't get there. The thing the Red Cross is going to ask you, please donate. That's what we're asking you to do today. To help as much as you can and help us help people contribute. Be part of the change you want to see. Do what you can. Give what you can. Talk to the people you know. And they can help. All together, we can make a huge difference. I don't know, do I see more questions there? So if you have individual questions about your individual cases, about people you have registered, then please send an email and we will be happy to answer those individual. We don't want to answer those questions in a group setting, especially as we are recording this meeting. Okay, so we really do not want to talk about individual cases at all when a meeting is being recorded. So please send us that email, okay? So one question that has come in is, will youth volunteering opportunities be available? So yes, youth can start fundraising. That's a great project. <laughs> um, for many years, I know that youth have helped raise money for wells and schools being built around the world. And 
this so the, a great initiative for school students and i've done fundraising of different things for causes when i was in school you know is help sponsor to you know to bring a family to canada that's a great initiative and then as we have um on the ground active roles to be done we i will be working to have appropriate roles and activities that youth will be able to engage with in the volunteer capacity. So that is something that we will be working on down the road. So definitely that will be happening. Um, and I will make those that information uh, available as soon as I have more information specific to that. Uh, so definitely, Holly. thank you. I wanted yes. to answer the, the, um, the lovely post from Melissa Polo, who I know is running a veterans group, and they're assisting a government-sponsored refugee um, with housing tomorrow. So they're moving furniture and, and, and things tomorrow, and they are looking for some people who want to help. So Melissa has posted her email in, in the chat there. And I'm sure Holly is going to take a look at that, Melissa, and be happy to get in touch with you on how our volunteers might be able to, to coordinate that with that. And we also will be really happy to hear from you in what you um, see as needed for the family because Mosaic will have some contacts where we can assist with furniture and things like that. So we know we have the contacts, we know we have, Sharon, right now we have somebody, some people who wanna donate uh, coats and, and um, brand new jackets to uh, refugees. So if you guys are hearing of people in need, let us know. We're more than happy to connect and, 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 and help. And um, Melissa, absolutely, I can think of somebody right now. My contractor who is renovating my house has a dining room said he would love to give to a refugee family. I hear it's lovely and awesome, so let me know. Happy to pass it on. And um, and that's how we make the world go around. And every time when we're able to donate furniture for them, because as government-assisted refugees, they get an allowance for furniture. And it's usually cheap, cheap crap that you and I wouldn't want to buy. And donated furniture is probably a much better value. Okay? So it's it's just a really nice, nice, nice thing. Um, you know, the... the Closing that would, must, would come to Mosaic would only be brand new and refugees would definitely pick them out. We, um, we don't uh, facilitate used clothes. That's just something we don't do. And, um, but, you know, gift cards and stuff like that, we certainly have available. So definitely connect with us on that too. And, and we're more than happy to help. But I want to go back to this. I know, I know I'm driving a dead horse here. What do we need? more than anything else, is your help to raise funds. Please talk to 10 people this week. Ask them to talk to 10 people. Ask them to ask 10 people to give $20. And ask them to ask those 10 people if they can talk to 20, 10 people to raise $20. Together we can amplify this and we can make a huge difference. But this is what we, we need to make an impact. So thank you. And I hope we answered most of the questions, but I'm gonna let Alex in there now. Thank you so much. I wanted to also add on what Iris and Holly were speaking about um, in regards to Chea's question about youth involvement. And one thing is that we are so passionate about equipping youth to change the world. And if it would be useful to have a youth-friendly information package, including youth-friendly, easy to understand, age-appropriate PowerPoints, handouts, posters, any information, we would be more than happy to provide that um, to anybody. We would be happy to sit down with your teen or with your, your youth and to um, talk about opportunities and ways that they could do some fundraising or reach out. Um, we also are, um, Jennifer, I've seen your question asking if there'll be any trainings available. Uh, I'm just going to uh, respond to that, Alex. Yeah, go for it, Sharon. I can put it in the chat, but sorry to interrupt you. I didn't actually. No, it's totally good. Um, yeah, no, that's a great question. I was going to put it in the chat here. 
So on Canada Helps, we have the tool set up and we actually have it where we can basically write the email for people who have, aren't comfortable really doing the ask. Uh, but we've outlined really all the information and then there's templates that um, basically can write the email for you and you can send it to your, you know, your friends and family. Um, and then it's, it's um, but as we sort of said, it, it really is, sometimes it's hard to ask it the first time, but people will feel your energy, they'll feel your compassion. And, you know, you don't have to be a professional to ask. It's really just being compassionate and feeling really connected to the cause and wanting to help. And people, people will see that and they will feel that when you ask them directly or by um, setting up a fundraising page and, um, you know, just explaining that. Um, Iris did her own, and which I think she put in the chat there. And it really is, you know, we have it set up for people um, and they can use the text that we put together. Um, but yeah, if there is any other questions with fundraising, you can certainly, um, Holly can include my email and people can reach out to me directly mm -hmm. if, they, if they want. And I can answer any of those questions. And Navid, you've got a question and you've got your hand up so patiently. <laughs> Navid, pardon me if I'm, I'm, I'm saying your name wrong. Okay, Dr. Ramzia. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. I have a question uh, about the uh, uh, private sponsorship, uh, which one you talked about. Uh, you said uh, the um, size of family and uh, the amount of money uh, the sponsor should deposit. If the uh, person who sponsored that family, relative, uh, uh, take responsibility uh, responsibility to pay for expenses like transport or um, housing or clothing and also um, um, any expenses. Uh, all these expenses will be deducted from the total amount of uh, total amount of money or not. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer that question. So yes, if furniture it could be deducted or housing can be deducted from this, but we would make an assessment as Mosaic as we are ultimately responsible for the Canadian government to make sure that people are supported at the same level as government assisted refugees. And as they are entitled to that financial support and that financial support is at social assistance level. So we want to make sure that that money is um, available prior to the sponsorship applications being submitted so that all of us have um, made sure that the obligations are being fulfilled. And what we will do is uh, we will talk to each family that has family registered separately and make sure that uh, those applications are able to be fulfilled and where the fund has to um, be applied and uh, able to supplement, okay? So we will look at that on an individual needs basis. And we will look at, at, at all of the needs. As I said, um, refugee sponsorship is not for sale. And it does not mean that the families that have the financial uh, capabilities of assisting families will be chosen first, okay? We want to be equitable and fair. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Does anybody else have any other questions that they would like to ask? <laughs> Naveed? Yes, hi. 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 Yes, sorry, I, I'm, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, uh, how are you, Holly? Great, thank you. Thank you for uh, taking my question. My question is, when does your organization will contact with the people who registered those family for a sponsorship? Because I remember in the last Zoom meeting, 
you guys said you're waiting for the federal um, election uh, government. Yes, election. So I was wondering when is this gonna be happen when you guys. So it'll okay. it'll happen very 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 soon. Okay. Um, okay. Sadly, we really don't have new information from the new government yet. They are kind of still in their baby steps. So uh, okay. we were hoping to have the information much faster, but we don't yet. But we will. We know that everybody is asking us, and you will have a meeting with us all of all of the registered people this month for sure. So at that point, we will make sure that we have hopefully all the information available that we think you're going to ask us. Okay. Okay. We're Thank try you to so anticipate much. all your questions, and we're going to try to have pretty much all of the answers. Uh, even if we don't have the answer, we're going to tell you we don't have the answer. But we're going to be okay. really, really straightforward and honest with you. Okay? okay. And I think that's the most important thing. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Naveed. Mahmood, if you'd like to unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, well, we're waiting for Mahmood. But, uh, Ranak? Hi there. Thank you so much for this event today. Um, I had a question. I work with a couple of doctors and lawyers. They're really busy. So if I just give them the link and they might not even look at it because they're really busy. <laughs> yeah. So I want to ask you guys uh, if you have any suggestions about the most effective way for me to communicate uh, the fundraising um, link basically with them can i just print a, a handout or something from the website and just hand it to them because i think personally by knowing them that will be the easiest way for them to respond to because <laughs> usually they don't check their emails that often or it goes through the piles and then they might they might not like respond to it so i was wondering if you guys have any suggestions for me yeah um Great question. So if, if that's the case, we actually have a fundraising right on our website, the Mosaic website. And rather than go through the Canada Helps, if you want to just show them on our website how to do it, it's super easy. And then they can just do it at their, you know, when they when they want to do it. Um, we have a donate, the donation set up there. It has all the information on what we're talking about tonight, but they can donate directly to Mosaic and then they would get a tax receipt directly from Mosaic. Okay, can you send that link again to the chat so I can, thank you. And Ronak, we can certainly look at helping you develop a template. We can make a template for a flyer that you can design for your sure. fundraising page that you can just put in your fundraising page on that little flyer. And we can certainly have that done over the next few days that you can then, we're gonna make sure that everybody can just put their page on there and that you can give to people because there is nothing more powerful than actually talking to people. You're absolutely right. We're not asking you to send emails all over the place. Yeah. We're actually telling you to talk to people, right? Because yeah. it's the talking that's gonna make the difference. Exactly. And sometimes in law firms, you also have people who run those fundraisers for the corporation. Yeah. Because maybe the firm will actually make a donation if they know this is something you really care about. So you might want to talk to human resources if that's something you, you, you could uh, really amplify in your organization. That's good. always a good place to go. But I'm sure we can put something together that we can help you make a poster. I'll uh, shoot you guys an email for the template and everything. I'm Absolutely. sure we can send it to everybody who's been here today. Okay, thank you. Okay. And Sarah, if you wanna. Hello. Hi. Great presentation tonight. Thank you so much for all this information. Um, I'm working with a family in Afghanistan who 
um, has worked with me directly on human rights issues and is Hasra, but they are not my family, they are friends. Am I able to register them? Because it, it, it's the registration form was very specific that uh, it seemed to be only to register family members and not friends in the region. So I just want to get some clarity of that and what happy, we can do. Happy to provide that clarity, Sarah. So we'll <laughs> consider friends family. I'm an immigrant. Ah. My friends are my family. Okay. However, Sarah, mm -hmm. people in Afghanistan, you are not able to register. Yes. But yep. they are not refugees. Mm -hmm. They are don't meet the definition of a refugee under the United Nations Convention. And this has been really difficult for us. But we want to make sure that we are clear in what we can do. So if they are outside Afghanistan, then you are able to register them. And we will consider you their family. Oh, okay. okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Wonderful. And Mahmoud, are you with us? If you'd like to ask your question. If not, we'll move along to, to Naz. Naz Ali? <laughs> yes, hello. Hello, everyone. My name hello. is Ali, thank you so much for all information about this uh, response for refugees in Afghanistan. I'm uh, from Afghanistan. Uh, just I have a question is uh, I registered uh, my nephew is, uh, for this Muzia program. He's lived now in the Malaysia. He uh, has a, is a and, uh, a new uh, court for uh, refugee court. He has a, oh. yeah, is a, how oh, can I do Naz, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you because we are recording this conversation. Yeah. I would like to have this conversation offline with you if possible. I've just put the contact email in the chat, okay? And you can send me a message and we can arrange uh, a Zoom meeting or a meeting on Teams, and we can have a chat then, if that is okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you so much for I have one more question. Can I ask, please? Certainly. Uh, I'm also from uh, Afghanistan, uh, but almost 20 years I'm in Canada. I have an extended family back home. How many family we can, because everyone wants to get out because of that terrified situation in Afghanistan. Uh, um, how many family we can sponsor? So we've asked people the, to not register the, more than three the private sponsors. Sorry? So there are several answers to that question. So for Mosaic, we ask people to register no more than three families. Okay. And okay. Um, three and separate family, yeah? Three separate families, yes. Thank and you. Family Thank you so much. For Canadian sponsorship is considered a, a couple. So husband, wife, or single parent and children under the age of 22. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's what um, meets the definition of a family. We know this is not the definition of most of us of a family, but your adult siblings are not considered part of their family if they're above the age 22. So they would be a separate family sponsorship. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. And uh, Sana. Yes, hi. Um, I have a couple of general questions. Uh, my question number one is about uh, volunteer in Ontario. Do you guys have a, or planning an office in Ontario? Because I'm assuming a large uh, a number of sponsors will be participating from Ontario and they will definitely need you know, physical office where they can go and, you know, there's like 
a lot of documentation involved in this, right? So I'm asking, do you, are you guys planning to have an office, physical office in Ontario somewhere, you, um, or no? So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm the one again answering that question for you, Sana, because private sponsorship, that's me. So we're going to work with a lot of people online uh, to complete applications, okay? But will we have a, a person in Ontario? Yes, we actually will. Really early next year, we will have a person specifically to help with our private sponsorship in Ontario, okay? So that's a big thing, but I'm telling you, we've now learned that during COVID, the one thing we've learned, all the stuff we can do online, we didn't know we could do before, okay? Yeah. So we're totally able to, to provide support in completing the applications because we actually do not submit paper applications to Immigration right. Canada. And we certainly want to encourage nobody to go and, and, and spend money on lawyers and everything else. Um, we specialize in private sponsorship. We know how to work with volunteers to complete application packages. And we know how to work with families. And we know how to put this all together. So if somebody asks, do you need help with admin for volunteers? Yeah, we can totally use volunteers to help complete application packages. So yes, these are the things we need. I'm going to go back to what we really, really need today. We need your support. We need to raise those funds. That's the biggest thing we need to do. So we need to talk to people. And you have to tell you, about two years ago, there had a young man in my office, and he told me he needed to help his family and sponsor them to come to Canada. And there were 13 people in his family, and there was not a sponsorship agreement holder that I knew of who had spaces. And I told him, if you want to do something and you really want to do it, you need to be persistent. And he, and he went, and I said, what I want you to do is talk to one person a day and tell them about your family. And I want you to tell them, do you know somebody who might be able to help me sponsor my family to come to Canada? They're refugees. They're in need. And he called me three days later and he said, Iris, I didn't talk to one person a day. I decided to talk to 10 people a day. And I got an appointment this weekend at a church that's going to help me sponsor my family. Because that's what he did. He didn't think there was a note to be found. He made it work. And if we can get some inspiration from that young man who went, I, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this happen. I'm not going to talk to one person. I'm going to talk to 10 people. And I'm going to say, I need you to help me. And you can say, I need you to help me to raise funds to sponsor as many Afghan refugees as possible. Please talk to 10 people. Ask them to give $20 each. And ask them to talk to 10 people. We can do this together. Seriously, people, we can do it together. Thank you, Iris. Uh, my second question is about like those sponsorship who registers the sponsors registered themselves with Mosaic. Um, are they going to be selected randomly or it's going to be one by one contacted by, uh, by you guys? So we're going to have a, a, a whole process that people are going to go through. We're going to ask them to, to complete some documentation and everything else. So I don't want to go through all of that today. We're going to invite okay. everybody who registered family to a meeting and then we're going to have all of that information together. And like I said, we're going to be really, really honest with the information we have and, and, and how much is possible. And no, it's not going to be a lottery or random. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. And um, Mahmood, I saw that you've put your question in the chat. So um, we will follow up with you separately, independently for your question. Um, uh, to get those to help answer some of those questions for you. So you just send me an email. I put the email address in there. It's sah at mosaicbc.org and email me separately and we'll have a chat. Okay. 
And we will include um, contact info, contact emails as well as the uh, the links to the the fundraising packages and information and everything as many resources as we can provide to you so you will be receiving if you probably a couple emails from us over the next uh the next few days uh to the week here um with more information as we have everything ready for you and as iris said for those of you on the call here this evening or that are listening to this playback that have registered to have family come to Canada, then we will be hosting the separate special uh, meeting with pertinent details specifically to that process uh, coming up fairly soon. And that'll help answer a lot of your questions and your burning questions that you have in regards to that. So if uh, we don't have any more specific uh, sort of general questions and other questions on how you can help and how you can get involved, then we would definitely, we um, thank you all for your time this evening and from joining us from across Canada to learn about the sponsorship, private sponsorship initiatives and Mosaic's AFSCAN initiative and how you can help and how you can get other people to help <laughs> because it's, it is going to take you know many of us working together towards the common goal of helping as many people come safely to Canada as you know as fast as we can so the more the faster we get the money the you know the faster we can start getting those applications processed through with the government to when, when the spaces are, are allocated and are available to be used. So we thank you. And um, if there's, or if there, we don't have any additional questions left here for this evening, then we will sign off. Again, we thank you all for your time, your dedication and your passion to join the, uh, the cause and supporting as many people as we possibly can to uh, to a new life in Canada. And thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a thank wonderful you, night. Safe night. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care of everything. Thank you.